Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00, and today we're doing something a little different. Today we're going to be running through what I'm affectionately calling a mini most detailed video. This is a video where I will explore the highest level of detail available for something significantly smaller than we're normally used to looking at. Again, I will try to keep to the law as much as humanly possible, but with this particular one, there will inevitably be some degree of speculation. So where relevant, I will try to address these gaps in the law by deducing function from the law information. And where there is no supporting law, I will inform you as such and let you know that it is a speculative assumption based on known scientific principles associated in the universe technology or simply by my knowledge of technology and material science. With that in mind, today we're looking at the monitors, and in particular, their physical form, known as the monitor carapace. Since this is a wholly different object to give the most detailed treatment, I've opted to reference directly the book Halo Warfleet, as it features an exploded model of the monitor carapace, that reveals some interesting information about the monitor, and gives us a little bit of insight, and a decent foundation to work from. We will periodically reference back to this exploded view to touch base and make relevant reference points. As such, we will analyse the monitor from front to back, looking at its major components and cross-referencing that to in-game lore and observations of the monitors seen in games and extended universe to theorise on the more precise particulars of the carapace. So with all of that said, let's begin this mini most detailed. A monitor's body consists of a roughly spherical shape that is concave on three sides, with an illuminated photoreceptor located on the front of the orb. There are larger variants of this monitor carapace, but the most common one measures at 58cm or 22.9 inches in length and 51cm or 19.9 inches in height. At the rear and sides are impulse drives for the means of propulsion. Encased deep within the carapace is the heart, or rather, the brain, of the monitor. The durants were a key element of Forerunner funeral proceedings. Upon the death of a Forerunner, their last memories and mental patterns were stored inside a time-locked durance. The durance, and a bit of plasma from the emoliation of the body, were then presented to the closest family members of the deceased. Durances have a half-life of a million years, and their resting places were closely guarded by the family such that the violation of a durance was considered sacrilege. The Promethean Knight's essences are also contained in a form of durance, one of which, named by the Covenant as the Didact's Gift, was recovered and studied by the UNSC during the Second Battle of Requiem. These durances also bear a striking resemblance to the brain-like device pictured here, leading to the inexorable conclusion that the monitor carapace is basically an interface and locomotive device for a composed mind within a durance. Forerunners were capable of extracting not only organic beings' brain state, but also simultaneously retaining the complete pattern of their biological body. The body could then be simulated, either virtually or in hard light form, so perfectly that the archived individuals themselves may potentially be left unaware of their incorporeal state. The monitor, later known as 343 Guilty Spark, was created through a process of gradual uploading. Chakas's dying biological body was connected to a harness which gradually transferred his consciousness into the artificial computing system of a monitor. Chakas was conscious for some portions of this process and existed as a hybrid of his biological and virtual self for a time. For example, he found he was able to measure distances with exact accuracy, while still connected to his body. Once this process was complete, Chakas's body died, but his mind and consciousness lived on within the composed durance. We will be treating this durance as the brain of the monitor, and even referencing known biological locations and processing centers within a living brain to inform what portions of the carapace do due to its inherent biomimetic nature. The forwardmost component is the eye of the oracle. The photoreceptor of a monitor vary in colour, including blue, red, orange, yellow, white, green and purple. However, some, if not all, monitors' photoreceptors can change colour. For example, the photoreceptors of 343 Gui Spark and 859 Static Carillion were both 
generally blue, though they turn red when they are in a combative state. 2401 Penitent's Tangent and 6A6 Ebullient Prism's photoreceptors were perpetually red, despite no evidence of combat-related behaviour. The Warden's photoreceptor was dull green. The eye appears to have a link connection to the posterior sections of the durance, suggesting a link to what would have been the visual cortex. What is also rather interesting is that when the monitor talks, the photoreceptor dims with each spoken word. This, at face value, would simply be to give the foreigners in the area a visual cue as to which monitor is talking at any given time, but due to its connection to the posterior of the durance, it seems likely that there is also a secondary connection to the posterior language centre of the durance required for speech. Though the carapace doesn't appear to have any external speakers to broadcast the voice, it is assumed that the photoreceptor itself contains a reverberative device designed to induce sound waves. The photoreceptor is also capable of working somewhat in reverse, where instead of receiving incoming light allowing the monitor to see, it can also project energy out of the photoreceptor. The level of energy can evidently be attenuated by the monitor at will, as they have been observed projecting smaller beams of energy that likely allow the monitor to wirelessly connect to systems and technology, thereby granting them direct control of the systems in absence of any other appendages. They can project slightly more powerful beams that also act as a form of tractor beam, allowing an object to be lifted and moved at will. This type of beam can likely be increased or decreased in power based on the mass of the object the monitor wishes to move. And the final type of beam the monitor can project is that of a powerful energy blast. Again, this can be attenuated with lower power beams delivering what equates to a mild electric shock, all the way through to higher power beams capable of killing unarmoured targets instantly and causing severe injury to armoured targets. The mechanism by which the monitor achieves this reverse function without temporarily losing its ability to see is completely unknown. A monitor's silvery metal covering is reminiscent of other forerunner constructs, though their spherical shape stands in contrast to the polygonal, angular shapes commonly seen in other forerunner creations. Some parts of the monitor are elaborately designed, while other parts seem intricately simple. The casing is made of an extremely strong metal that acts as an impressively resilient armour plating for the monitor. It is with relative certainty that the casing is not made of hard light, but instead an actual refined metallic compound used by the foreigners to create some of their most persistent and long-lasting constructs. It is also assumed that there is a peripheral sensor array embedded throughout the metal that links to the monitor's mind directly, as the monitors have been witnessed flinching, saying ouch, and even screaming out in pain as they take damage. The monitor also has extremely advanced forerunner energy shields capable of repelling all conventional weapons. Monitors have a remarkable resistance to small arms fire, though they will eventually succumb to taking extensive damage. On installation 08, John117 was able to destroy 343 Guilty Spark after multiple discharges from an M6 Spartan laser, a weapon that can destroy tanks with a single discharge, demonstrating that monitors can sustain damage from high-powered weaponry. However, even Spark's badly damaged shell survived to be recovered by the Rubicon, though it eventually shut down and Spark uploaded himself into the ship's systems. This indicates that, much like other energy shields, the shielding can be overwhelmed and overloaded with enough of a directed energy attack, but once this is accomplished, the carapace and its remarkable metal still stands as a significant defence for the monitor, and the visible shell of the monitor is just the outermost layer of this carapace, where it is actually multi-layered to protect the durance held within its centre. Should a monitor be damaged, it is capable of self-repair, though most significant command monitors were often backed up in multiple duplicates. Should one of them be destroyed, its consciousness would continue to exist in another physical shell. While monitors are authorised to use all recovery measures available to them at the facility they are assigned to, the construction of a new replacement monitor must be approved by Fleet Command. The durance at the core of the carapace has two attached conduits one attached to the posterior that rises over the top of the durance, while the second is attached to the base and carried forward underneath the durance. Going back to our biological analogue, 
the upper conduit appears to connect roughly to where the cerebellum of the biological brain would have been, implying that its purpose is to transmit motor function commands from the durance to the carapaces mobility systems. The second attaches to where the brainstem or the upper spinal column would have been, implying that this may have function as the central or extended nervous system of the monitor, again linking back to the assumption that the metallic casing contains sensors and nodes which interpret what can be considered as tactile response, and even pain, and relay this to the brain of the monitor. There are several crystalline looking panels that appear to fit into and rest against these conduits, likely to allow large amounts of information to be moved through them. These likely also connect to the carapace itself and facilitates the movement of information between the durance and the carapace. One of the largest components within the monitor carapace connects to these conduits and can be found as the large semicircular structure towards the rear of the carapace. It is known that this component contains the impulse drive allowing the monitor to move forwards and due to its size it likely contains the monitor's primary power source as well. The shape of this component indicates it somewhat cradles the durance and its surrounding shell and its inner surface is detailed with what appear to be additional conduits that appear to match up with the connection points of the side panels. These likely channel the energy required to generate the carapace's antigravitic effects as well as some of the lateral movement systems enabling the monitor to move from side to side while three smaller conduited repulsors on the front of the housing surrounding the photoreceptor likely allow the monitor to move backwards. The monitor's altitude is likely changed simply by adjusting the energy levels being fed to the carapace's anti-gravity generator. Monitors were commonly given administrative roles within the forerunner ecumene. Most prominently, monitors were tasked with servicing and maintaining the halo installations and ensuring that the virulent flood stay imprisoned. Beyond their most well-known function, Monitors were assigned to a wide variety of tasks by the different foreigner rates, ranging from robotic household servants to security, combat support, fleet coordination, and duties involving the conservation measures. Monitors also oversee the maintenance and function of many foreigner facilities, including the line installations. But it's also worth remembering that although the monitors are one of the very few ancillas that actually possess a physical body in the form of the monitor carapace, they are still ancillas and capable of transcending their physical state should it be necessary. When 343 Guilty Spark's highly damaged carapace was recovered by the Office of Naval Intelligence aboard the ship UNSC Rubicon, even in a nearly entirely unfunctional state he managed to distract the crew with recollections of his past while he infiltrated the ship's systems transferring his consciousness out of his broken carapace without the crew or the attending AI's knowledge and seized control of the ship. He later uploaded his consciousness to an Armaga carapace granting Spark a physical humanoid body, one which he hadn't occupied since his original human form died. The monitor carapace is one of the more unique and interesting constructs that the foreigners left behind and one that has served the vast majority of the monitors very well for the 100,000 years that have elapsed since the activation of the array. There were once hundreds, perhaps even thousands, of monitors which attended a plethora of different roles. It remains to be seen if these monitors survived the ages, as well as the ones we have encountered. Time will reveal all. Thanks for watching, stick your comments down below, I look forward to what you have to say. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons Sir Tenchi, the silent cartographer, Brian, Sebastian, Red Sea, Darian and Neek, the holders of the mantle, Ty, Black Biscuit, J Rabbit, Austin, Kaiser, Silux, Reclaimer216, The Revanche, Wolf Slim and Andre, my reclaimers, Zack, Deep Cover, Verbal Statue, Spesigo, Spartan A498, Guppy, Josh, Mickey, Bastion, Molshar, Slithery Tube Dude, and Nightrise, my Metarchs, and all the other patrons that have jumped aboard to support the channel. You guys are awesome, and all of this wouldn't be possible without you. If you like Halo lore discussed to insane levels of detail, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. Be sure to support us on all major social media channels, including Discord, and if you really love the channel, consider heading over to Patreon and supporting the channel over there. It would mean the world to me and would free up more of my time for me to put into this content and other Halo-related goodness. Take it easy, everyone, and find peace in the domain.